Wow, condo sales in North Florida. This last week, 86% of them sold below list price. <laughs> 86%, that's incredible. Now, is it because they were priced too high or is it because of the now ever-changing condo market here in Florida, which affects us here in North Florida also. Hey, I'm gonna be going over all the real numbers here, and this, I'm gonna be covering a lot more things also tonight. I'm gonna to be going into the back end of my MLS, and I'll be showing you the active listings for condos, the solds in the last seven days, those that are under contract, those that withdrew, expired, the new condo sales, and, and the foreclosures, okay? Now those foreclosures will be of active listings. Then I'm gonna show you how people paid for these condos. What percentage of people used cash? How many used conventional financing? How many used FHA and how many used VA? I put everything into an Excel spreadsheet that is easy to, to track and to look at. We're gonna be tracking this weekly of all the MLS data, plus a whole lot more than what I show in the beginning of the video. Condos of the week. These are examples of condos that sold below list and a condo that sold above list. And we go over what they paid for, what the appreciation was, and also look at those monthly condo fees. And then also I'll show you either a headline or two. Hey, you know what? I'm just a regular guy who happens to be a real estate agent up here in the Jacksonville metro area, and I sell and buy all up here in Northeast Florida for folks. Hey, and I just go into the back end of my MLS every week, and I pull out the numbers, the real numbers for you, and share them with you. Okay, so let's get started and go into the MLS and look at those. Let's start off with those active listings. All right, here we are in the Northeast Florida MLS. And this is the largest MLS up here in the North Florida region. And we're going to start off with those active listings for the condos. Active is 972. Now that is your inventory, okay? So there's 972 condos for sale. Next, we're going to take a look and see what sold in the last seven days. In the last seven days, we had 36 units sold. Okay, next we're going to look and see how many are active under contract. Okay, these are people that are under contract with contingencies. That can be for either appraisals, repairs, you know, anything like that. So, how many are actively under contract? That number is 122. Next, we're going to see how many went pending in the last seven days. These are people that were active under contract, but they went into pending status. That number is 28. Now when you add up the active under contract and the pending, that's when you get the total under contract number. Okay, next we're gonna see how many people withdrew their listings in the last seven days. These are listings that are active listings, they just can't be shown, and that number is five. Next we're gonna look and see how many listings expired in the last seven days. That number is 39, okay? Now we're going to take a look. Now those are not ones that are no longer for sale. They didn't sell, so they're no longer for sale. Now we're going to see how many new condos sold in the last seven days. We don't get many new condos. And that right there is an Easter egg, zero. Okay, now let's see how many new condos are in the active listings. How many are for sale? Seven. So we still have an inventory of seven, and it it's, looks like it's probably the same seven every week. All right, next I'm going to take a look, and we look at what is um, in, the, in the active listings that's status as foreclosures, pre-foreclosures, short sales. Okay, we're going to start off with those that are in the foreclosure status. That number is 42. Next, we're going to take a look and see how many are in the pre-foreclosure status. That number is one, and next we're going to take a look at short sales. And there's one condo, status is short sale in the active listings. Okay, now what I do is I export all that data from the MLS and into an Excel spreadsheet. Now, there's a lot more data that's exported than what I just covered there, and I'm going to cover it over in these in my um, Excel spreadsheets that I create because the Excel spreadsheet that comes out just has a lot of information, and you see a lot of data like this, and then I put it into a spreadsheet of my own that's a little easier to, to read and see for the show so we could follow week by week. All right, so let's go back into my Excel spreadsheet. 
Okay, here we are, week five of the show, and we are looking at active listings at 972. So we see the inventory has come up a little bit. Um, as you can see, the, the, what's in the yellow column here is the current week that we're covering, and these other weeks are prior. And we, that way we can follow along and see if there's a trend. Okay, next we're looking at how many sold. 36 sold, so one more sold than last week. Um, active under contract, 122. It's down a little bit. Pending, 28 up a little bit. So that our total is actually only down by one. So it's almost the same as last week. Okay. So and as we see over the last few weeks, it's gradually been going up more under contract. The amount that withdrew their listings was five. And the amount that expired in one week, 39, a big jump there, over three times what it was last week, okay? We also saw this in um, the Bubble Watch show on Friday night, and that was a, a giant um, increase in the expires. New condos sold are zero, like they've been since I started this, and the new condos active are seven also, the same ones, okay? How did people pay for these condos? All right, here we look at, here we are, week five, it was like 56% cash. That's up from last week where we were even, and this here is 44% conventional. No FHA and new VA and no other financing. Okay, look at that foreclosure number, how it compared with last week. As you can see, we have down one foreclosure, the pre foreclosure is the same, up one short sale, so we ended up netting the same amount for everything. All right. Next, we're going to take a look and see how many of those sold below list, at list, and above list. All right, here we look at the condos that sold under list. There is what I'm talking about. 86% sold below list price, okay? That is a jump from last week, okay? Now, condos that sold at list, 8.33, okay? That's... That is, that's a pretty good drop. I mean, we saw less in week two, but you know, a lot more there than the last two weeks. Condos that sold above list, very few, 5.5%, 5.56. And because the amount of condos sold um, isn't that much, you know, you know, it's it's the percentage there is can be a little deceiving. Because here I'll show you where I where I look at this other. Um, uh, numbers to show you the actual quantity. So over here on the side we can see there was 36 total. Okay, what we have is 31 that were sold under list, three of them sold at list, and only two went above list. Alright, next let's take a look at um, the categories. Now this here is in the in the different price groups, okay? So condos that sold for a half a million and above, that 500,000 is a half a million. 30%, okay, I mean, wow, that's that's a lot, okay. Um, condos that sold in the 400 range, 8%. Condos that sold in the 300, almost 14%. Condos that sold in the 200 range, 27, that was your next biggest amount. And then the ones that sold below 200, you know, a little over 19%. Again, I because there's so few sold, I show you also how many units. So. As we look over here, we can see 11 units sold at the 500 above, 3 units sold in the 400s, 5 units sold in the 300s, 10 units sold in the 200s, and 7 units sold below 200. All right, next we go to the new, and nothing new in the new. All right, zero, zero, zero. Okay, so nothing to report there. Okay, because... Um, you know that new law, which is which has started all this hoopla over you know condos in Florida, and if you're not familiar with that new law, um, when I did week one of this when I started this show, I explain about the law. So if you're not familiar with it, check out my week one. And actually, at the end of this video, I'll have a box up here where you can click on it to go right to that video. And then that gives you the full explanation of what's going on with the condo situation here in Florida, okay? I just don't want to repeat it every week, even though I know I get a lot of new people to this show, so that's why I refer it to week one so that you can be brought up to speed on that and what's going on. All right, so because of that law, it has to do with, you know, condos that are three stories or above. So what I do is 
in this show I break down those condos and show you how many were sold at the certain at the certain total stories. Now they're looking at total stories. Okay, so what this next chart will be is the the total stories and how many sold at that. So let's take a look at that now. All right, here we are, week five. Well, let me move this over a little bit so we can see week one there too. And um, on the right here, you see the total number of stories, you know, as it goes down. And then we'll see this week how many units sold at that many stories. So, for instance, week five, here we are. There were eight units sold that were one story buildings, 17 units sold in two story buildings, six were in three stories, one in four, one in five, one in ten, one in twelve, one in seventeen. Okay, and then you can see the previous weeks what was done there. Okay, next what I do is I go to the years. Okay, now again the law, you know, depending on where the condo is, it's going to be 25 years or 30 years that they're going to go back there. You're going to have to do all these, like, you know, um, repairs or you got to you got to put a fund in for future repairs, anticipate repairs. So things basically before, you know, uh, for all general purposes, 1999 and below, okay, for right now. Um, so here's the condos, you know, so the older the more. And then I also put the number of stories for those, okay? So as we see here, um, we had, now these were individual condos, okay, these years. So as you can see here, as I scroll down, it go all the way, you know, it's like there's 36 of them, okay? So that's the interval. That's why sometimes you'll say the same date twice, like 1974 twice, because that's two different condos, and then you see the stories. So there you look at, and what I'll do is I'll just scroll it down so you can take a look and see. And then, like, look at those 1974, 10 stories, 1976, 17 stories, 1981, 12 stories. Those are all going to be affected by this new law. All right, and we'll just scroll down. And then you can always freeze this video to, to study those if you wanted to. All right, next I look at the counties. Okay, where were these, where were these condos sold? Okay, which counties had the sales? And this week, 19 were sold in Duval County, 16 in St. Johns County, 1 in Bradford County. Brought the total to 36 units, okay? Now, I had somebody um, at one time ask me to show all the ones that were below list price and and showing you know so what i did was i pulled out of the excel spreadsheet just as it is um the it showed the original list price the sold price then the amount below list price that it sold for so i'm going to share that with you hey you know what before we get to that if you like the way i put this together for you to look at and and set it up then give me a thumbs up and if you'd like to be part of Bubble Watch Nation and subscribe to these videos, I do have a lot more videos on my YouTube channel. If you've seen the channel, okay. If not, you know, check it out. You know, there are a lot more than just this, this one video. Then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. All right, let's take a look at that chart there with the ones that sold under. Okay, here we look at, oh, we see right here, the original list price of the, of the, of the ones units sold. Then we're going to look at the closed price. This was the price, that closed price is actually the sold price. And then this over here is the difference. Okay, so you can see the first one sold for $120,000 below list. But then when you look at the price of what it was, it was over $2 million. You know, um, the percentage of that difference isn't as great as, say, maybe something that was like $500,000. So here we are. I'm going to scroll this also so that you can um, you can freeze the video if you'd like to you know study it a little more okay next thing I do is I is I do what I call condo of the week I take one condo that sold below list and one that sold above list show examples of it and then go into little details and what they paid for it and their appreciation over the years they had it things like that and then show the history of you know 
when they listed it and where did they make price reductions where it was days on the market all that kind of stuff okay we look at all that and by the way too let me just mention that this excel spreadsheet plus those condos of the week okay the mls data sheet for that the public version is available for download from my weekly newsletter it comes out every tuesday if you like to subscribe to that just send me an email to this email right here saying you want to be part of the newsletter and I'll put you on it. You can download that. It does have a lot more information just than just, you know, the Excel spreadsheet and the MLS sheets, okay? And just subscribe to that. All right, let's start off now with the, uh, we're going to look at the one that sold below list. All right, here we are with the one that sold below list price okay um, built in 1996 it's in st john's county 1163 square feet okay it's a two bedroom two bath and you see the total number of stories is three so it would fall under that that um, new law okay now let's take a look i like with the condos i like to take a look at these uh, association fees because this is where the problem's going to be for most of them all right the association fee on this one currently is 455 dollars monthly okay now um you know i don't know if they've done any engineering studies or repairs and stuff or they've started to fund that yet but if they have to fund uh, uh repairs on this one um, that could jump, that 455 could jump, and that's what leads us to the problem. All right, let's take a look and see, you know, a history of what they, um, what they put it on the market for, what they sold it for, and days on the market. Okay, as we see here, they put it on the market for $325,000, okay? Um, over time here, they finally reduced it uh, to below 300 to 299.5. At which time they ended up getting an offer for 288,000, being on the market for 215 days. Okay, next to go, next I'm going to take a look here and see the price per square foot. That was the price per square. Next we're going to look at the price per square foot. Two hundred and forty-seven dollars a square foot is what it sold, and there were concessions of thirty-two hundred dollars. All right, let's look at an appreciation calculator. Okay, when we now I take out that thirty-two hundred dollars out of the total when I put it into the appreciation calculator. So over that. Um, over 21 and a half years, 3.38% okay appreciation, which is below what we normally like to see. The normal is 5 to 6%. Of course, we're not counting that crazy time, 2020, 2021, where everything was, you know, in double digit appreciations, okay? All right, now let's take a look at the one that sold above list price. And there was only two of them, so I picked one. All right, here we are, this condo here, um, built in 1985, so it is an older condo. 1,750 square feet um, in St. John's County. Um, total stories is one, and that is correct. I checked it. It just is a one-story condo. The whole building is what they are, and they've got water view. Um, it's a three-bedroom, three-bath. And this one here, let's take a look at the fees. All right, this one here has, has some hefty fees here. All right, the first one is almost $3,000, 2972 quarterly. Okay, so times four for your annual. The next one is semi-annually, so times two, and that's $1,114. All right, let's take a look at the history and see what they were asking and what they ended up selling it for. All right, this one here, they put it on the market for $975,000, was on the market for two days, and they got an offer of $1,001,000. Now, they did say there was multiple offers on this, and when I see an oddball number like that, that meant that people were anticipating someone was going to offer a million, so they just upped it to $1,001,000 and got, and, got um, and got the bid there. Let's take a look at the price per square foot, $572 a square foot, holy cow, and concessions of $20,000. All right, let's see what these people paid for this house. Okay, they bought it back in June of 2016 for $555,000, okay? So now let's go put it into an appreciation calculator. Here we got, now of course I adjust for the $20,000 um, 
dollars in concessions and so we look at it they had it just under eight years at 7.6 percent per year so they did okay on that from when you look at it from that standpoint there um, on the percentage per year um, now concessions twenty thousand dollars okay this was all you know figured into that offer that's why they went over a million dollars with it they probably wanted to do the twenty thousand and you know, since it started at 975 go to 995 but they thought you know what crap someone's gonna offer a million dollars so we'll do the million and all that so the people even though they were given twenty thousand in concessions back they're still making five thousand above what they um, originally paid on it now when you do stuff like this with the concessions then and this was financed also um, then you do run the risk of the appraisal you know issue and then there's an appraisal gap so the gap either has to be paid by the seller or the buyer and if no one agrees to pay the gap then nothing happens all right hey you know you you can see right now there's a lot of changes in this condo market so is it actually a good time to buy all right um if you get a good enough deal what you got to factor in though is that monthly hoa or the fees those hoa fees include all that maintenance stuff i just assume it's going to double okay if i'm buying a condo <coughs> excuse me if you can if you can handle the fees figuring twice the fees then go for it now a lot of people say that the condo market is going to get even worse but is it going to for the one and two story condos that's yet to be seen we just started doing this started tracking it of course weekly doesn't give you a full indication more a monthly does give you a better but with at least the way I do the show you can see that hey you know what this was week five you know here of bubble watch condo edition and next and Friday I have regular bubble watch coming up and until then I'm out of here <laughs>